give honor to God on this afternoon to the Supreme Shepherds of this great ministry, Amen. God the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Give honor to the under shepherds of this great ministry, our very own overseer, Brother mm -hmm. J. Mangum, our very own assistant overseer, Rebecca S. Gray, Amen. And every minister, every missionary, every official associated with the ministry. Amen. Amen. And as, as God will have me to speak, I believe, to see one today, uh, just certain circumstances that occur in every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some things just occur in every day in life. And we don't always understand why they have to occur, mm -hmm. why we have to go through certain things, and uh, why certain things are presented to us, certain things are said and done. We don't always understand. Mm -hmm. But God knows. Yes. Mm -hmm. God knows and God has already seen in advance Amen. Yes, everything that's going to happen. Every conversation that's going to be had, God mm -hmm. has already seen it in advance. Yes. And um, there are times as individuals, service of God, as we stand before God to merely do what God has called us to do, mm -hmm. we don't know a lot of us what had to happen so that we could stand in the place of restation. Jesus, Jesus. Amen. S someone had to go through something mm -hmm. Jesus. that we can stand where we're standing. Mm -hmm. I can say it that way. Mm -hmm. Someone went through some heartache. Mm -hmm. uh, someone went through some hard times. And there were even times when someone had to stand head to head with mm -hmm. Satan. Jesus so that we can enjoy the liberties that we enjoy in Christ today. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times there, there was a mother, a father, mm -hmm. there was a grandmother, grandfather, there was an aunt, there was an mm -hmm. uncle, there was somebody that paved the way. And a lot of times we, we hear stories and we can see and understand and appreciate some of these stories, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of times people never understand or never get to know where they came from. Yes. And, and as God used all of us in a different way, and we, we think about that and contemplate that sometimes, it wasn't just one day God decided I was going to stand here, but there was something before I arrived. There was Amen. somebody before I arrived that God shaped and formed mm. and used so that I could stand here. Yes. But in that process, they had to go through some things. They had to cry Jesus. some nights. Jesus. They had to be misunderstood sometimes. There, it was a fight for them. Mm. Mm to persevere in their position so that I could stand. Mm. Amen. There were times they had to go, like I said, head to head with Satan. Mm. They might not ever share the battles and the mm. scars, but they went through something so that I could stand here. Amen. Mm. There are a lot of times when we are going through these types of situations, we don't understand the purpose. Mm. Mm. We're going through, we're, we're, we're going, mm. we're in certain situations, we're suffering with certain situations. We're dealing with certain situations. But as God has said before, it's bigger than this. Mm. It's bigger than what you're going through right now. It's bigger than the conversations that you're having right now. It's bigger than your frustrations mm. right now. God says, I'm working on something. And God says, see, we can only see one or two pieces of a puzzle. But God says, I, I designed the puzzle, mm. and I know every piece, and I'm putting it in place. Right now, you only see one small piece of the puzzle. Mm. Don't give up because you can't see the puzzle. Don't give up because you can't find the rest of your pieces. God is saying, I am God, and I'm working this situation out. Mm. Amen. Yes, yes. But Hannah had a story. Mm. Hannah had a story. Yes. And yes. I want to look at Hannah's story on, on this afternoon, according to God's will, according to God's plan according to God's purpose. Yes. We know who Hannah was. She was a young lady who endured much agitation. Mm, mm, mm. Hannah endured much, much frustration. Hannah endured disappointments. Hannah had to go through discouragement. Hannah's heart was heavy uh, mm. <laughs> sometimes. She had to deal with a heavy heart. Many emotional situations, her emotions were just up and down. This is who Hannah was. Mm -hmm. But Hannah didn't know who was in her womb. Hannah didn't mm. know the purpose that God had for her. And God had every tear Hannah had to shed, God knew about it. Amen. And God says, I know you didn't feel it when you were going through mm. it, but my hands were in that situation. Every mm. time you had to cry because of what was said to you. Every 
time you had to shed a tear because of what was done to you. My hand was in that situation. And what God wants us to do is be encouraged. Amen. Be encouraged Amen. through the hard times. Be encouraged yes. the nights you had to cry. Be encouraged because you don't know what God is mm. planning in your life. God says, I have something wonderful. All that Hannah, mm. all the negative things Jesus. that Hannah had to experience. God had a wonderful plan for Jesus. Hannah's life. Amen. Amen. He had a marvelous plan for Hannah's life, but she had to endure mm. the hurts, the pain, the disappointment, the discouragement. She had to endure, oh, mm, some situations mm. that she yeah. didn't like. Amen. Mm. But God had Samuel in her mm. womb. She didn't know that. Mm. Mm. Hannah's story. Yes. Mm. Hannah's story. As we look at um, Hannah's story, one of the, the main things I want to look at is Hannah's path to breakthrough. Mm. I want to go to 1 Samuel chapter 1. We'll start at verse 1. Verse one. I thank God. Um, this is this is Mother's Day. We're not just dealing with mothers, but we're dealing with all spiritual leaders who had someone coming up behind them, and they persevere. Mm -hmm. It's not easy persevering in hard times, mm -hmm. but as as we mm -hmm. persevere, that next generation behind us, we're mm -hmm. giving them a platform. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. We don't yes. see and understand Jesus. that platform. We don't even know what God is going to call some of them to do, but I must persevere. No matter how tough my situation becomes, I must persevere. Sometimes we don't even know what God is doing with us, but we must persevere. Amen. We must persevere. So in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it kind of sets the, the stage or it lays the foundation mm -hmm. of Hannah's story mm. and what God is going to be, what is God is doing in Hannah's situation. And as we look at Hannah's story, we're going to look at all the negative circumstances Hannah had to deal with. All the negative circumstances mm. that Hannah had to face. It was part of her journey. She couldn't get around it. Don't, it does not feel good, but it's just part of your journey. Mm. And um, I have to tell myself that sometimes it's part of your journey. It's part of your journey, what you're experiencing. And I know some things we bring upon ourselves. I'm not talking about those things. There are some things we bring upon ourselves, some cries and tears. Yes. We brought it upon ourselves. Jesus. 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 We made. But even in that, uh -huh. God is merciful. Yes, Jesus. Yes. But I'm, I'm dealing with Hannah's situation, and it's just something that happened upon Hannah. So in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now there was a certain man of Ramothane Zophim of Mount Ephraim and his name was Elkanah the son of Jeroham the son of Elahu the son of Tohu the son of Zuf an Ephraimite and in, in verse 1 I'll pause there in verse 1 it introduces Elkanah Hannah's husband that's what verse 1 does but in verse 1 as it introduces Elkanah it shows who Elkanah descended from. And that's very important to Hannah's story. Who he descended from is very important to Hannah's story. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in 1 Samuel, it doesn't mention this, but if you were to go to 1 Chronicles, and just jot it down, but I won't turn there. 1 Chronicles, and if you were to go to chapter 6, and if you began to read verses 22 through 25, we'll find out it gave Elkanah's family line, but it mentions in Chronicles that El Elkanah's family line were the priests. Elkanah was a priest. He was a priest. He descended from Kohath, who was one of the sons of Levi. And it's very important in this passage that we know that Elkanah was a priest because it kind of shapes Hannah's story. The fact that he was a priest. And if you read in that section of First Chronicles, and this is the praiseworthy and the blessing because in Hannah's story, the main thing that Hannah had to deal with was the fact that she was barren mm. and that she could not have children. Mm. She couldn't have children. But in the word of God, as you began to read in Chronicles, as it began to list the, the priestly heritage of Kohath, it lists Elkanah as one of the priests, but it also lists Samuel as his child. Mm. Mm. That's praiseworthy because she didn't ever think she was going to have a child. Mm -hmm. And I didn't expect to have a child, but not, 
did she not just have a child, but her child is listed under the heritage of the priest. I'm talking about what God is doing mm. in this situation. Jesus. We don't know what God is doing. Mm. We don't know what God is doing. Yes, yes. And I can't keep my eyes focused mm. on these trivial things that upset my life. Come on. Mm. Certain conversations upset my life. Uh -huh. Certain ways people are dealing upset my life. Jesus. Certain things I had to struggle with upset my life. And God yes. said it's much bigger than that. Mm. Yes, yes. It's much bigger than that. That's right. Because when Amen. you see the end of the story, you're going to say every tear was oh, worth it. Every Jesus. cry was worth it. Yes, yes. Thank you, Elkanah Jesus. was a priest. Yes. That's who her husband was. He was a priest. And we know who the priests were. And any son that Elkanah had was going to stand as a priest. Yes. So I have to understand yeah. my situation sometimes is not about me. It's, yes. it's about what God is doing for me. And not just what God is doing for me, but what is God doing for my seed? Sometimes God allowed me to experience things to set my seed in place. Yes. What Hannah went through set Samuel in place. It's not just for you, but it's for your seed coming up behind you. Stand strong for your seed coming up behind you. Stand strong so that they can have a sure platform to stand on. Stand strong. Stand strong. Things are going to be said and done, but stand strong. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Stand strong. Hannah had to stand strong. It wasn't easy, but stand strong. Amen. Yes, yes. Mm. Verse 2. Verse 2. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, mm. and the name of the other, Penina. Mm. Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Mm. Looking at negative circumstances. And with Hannah, as we look at Hannah's story, we see that her negative circumstances built up, were built upon one another. Mm -hmm. It was one situation after another. Mm -hmm. And we see that sometimes. One headache after another. Mm -hmm. One frustration mm -hmm. after another. One disappointment after another. One hurt mm -hmm. after another. Yes, yes. There are some studies that say, as you look at the, the, the laws in the scripture, they say it's not in the laws in the scripture, but there are some religious studies that say that a priest could only have one wife. Mm -hmm. And we know that Elkanah was a priest. Mm -hmm. But some studies say a priest was only allowed one wife, but in the case of a barren wife, mm -hmm. a priest was allowed two wives. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a possibility it could have been, yes. that could have been the case. Yes. As a priest, Elkanah was allowed two wives. And as you read verse 2, Hannah was listed first, so there's a great possibility she was the first wife. Uh -huh. And because she was barren, Elkanah took a second wife so that he could have seed. Uh -huh. Talking about disappointments, it's, 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 a, it's disappointing enough and it's discouraging enough, just looking at Hannah's story and her disappointments, her uh -huh. struggles. Discouraging enough when you can't give your husband a son or a child at all. Oh, yes. uh -huh. That's discouraging. It breaks the woman's heart, especially in that time. Right. Amen. And that time, it meant a lot to be able to have a child. It meant a lot to give your husband yes. a son. Yes. It meant a lot. In that culture that Hannah grew up in, it wasn't good to be barren. Mm -hmm. You were looked down upon and, and, and you were blamed. God spoke in his word many times that if you obey me, I'll make you fruitful. Yes. If, you, if you disobey me, I'll make you barren. So it, it, she had to deal with a lot of inner turmoil with her being barren. What people were saying, what people were thinking, how she felt, how her husband felt. That was frustrating enough. That was disappointment, uh, disappointing enough. That was discouraging enough. But if this is the case, for my husband to take another wife because of my condition, mm -hmm. that made it worse. Mm -hmm. So these are at least two of Hannah's negative circumstances. One, she was barren. Two, a great possibility that her husband took a second wife because Jesus. she was barren. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And many nights she probably said, God, why? Yes, yes, yes. Why am I chosen for this? But see, we have to, we don't, we can't see the whole picture. No, and that's why God says stand. Yes. God says persevere. I know what I'm doing in this mm. situation. It looks negative. Yes. It looks pretty bad, yes. Hannah. Yes, But I have a plan for you, Hannah. Stand. Jesus. Endure. Persevere. Trust God. Anybody in certain situations, trust God. Cannot see it mm. as I stand in my position, in my situation. I can't see what God is doing. I can't feel how God is moving in my life. I'm saying my, but just generally speaking. Yes. Because of what I'm going through, I can't see God moving. I can't see God working. Mm. It's discouraging. 
This is what possibly Hannah could have been feeling. Amen. Verse 3. This is the situation that was going on in, in Elkanah's house. Two wives, one fruitful, one barren, mm. one bringing forth children, one cannot have. One has somewhat of a happier continent, but one is kind of heavy. But these are my two wives. This is what, the, and I believe Elkanah had come to resolve, this is what God has given me. This is the hand I'm dealt with. Yes. You'll see why I say that in verse 3. Verse 3 lets us know what Elkanah did about his situation that he was living with. Because uh -huh. yes. look at Hannah, but El Elkanah was going through some things as well. Yes. Yes. Elkanah was experiencing this situation as well. Yes. He was part of the story. But in all that Elkanah was dealing with, it says, And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli... Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. So what Elkanah had resolved himself to do, and the scripture don't mention it, and I know Elkanah saw, or at least discerned, the tension in his home. <laughs> he had to have seen. The scripture don't mention whether or not he saw it, whether or not he ever dealt with it. It doesn't talk about that aspect of who Elkanah was. But what the scripture does let us know, in spite of his circumstances, in spite of what was going on in his home, in spite of the frustrations, every year he obeyed the law of God and he took his family to Shiloh. That's where the temple was at that time. Shiloh was a place of worship. Shiloh where, was where that, the temple was set up that Moses had built. It was set up in Shiloh. That's where they went to offer sacrifices. That's where they went to hold their annual feast. And once a year, in spite of his situation, in spite of the frustration that his wife was experiencing, in spite of what was going on, it says every year Elkanah took his family. That means he took Hannah. Yes. That means he took Penana. Mm -hmm. That means he took every child in his house and he took them to the house of God to oh, worship. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. He took them to worship. This is what it's all about. Don't cancel out worship because your life is too hard. Mm. Don't cancel out yes, worship yes. because you think God dealt you a bad hand. Mm. Don't cancel out worship. It's important Jesus. to keep worship. Stay in worship with God. Yes. Whatever your situation is, don't stop serving God. Jesus. Don't stop praising God. Don't stop honoring God. Don't stop obeying God. Yes. It's not Amen. time to cut out because life is getting hard. It's not time to cut off God because you're disappointed. It's not time to cut off God because you don't know which way God is Jesus. taking you. Those are the times that you cling to God Deep. as Deep. hard as you can. Yes, yes. yes. Amen. Deep. Deep. Jesus. I'm sure he saw Penana and what she was doing, but he went to worship. Yes. He said, I'm taking you to worship. There's something in worshiping God yes, we can lean from. It helps us Amen. with our situation yes, if we yes. worship properly. So we don't, he didn't cut out worship. He didn't say I'm staying at home because of what I'm dealing with, because of what I'm going through. It's a trick of Satan. What I'm going through is a trick yes. of Satan. Amen. It's a trick of Satan. Stay in worship. So he took his family to worship. And this pastor says that he went before, he sacrificed to the Lord of hosts. And in this story of Hannah, Many things are being introduced to show God's moving in his yes, situation. Yes. Many things are being said, so the, the, the Lord is referred to as the Lord of hosts. And Hannah didn't know what was in her womb. Hannah didn't know what God was going to call her to bring forth. Hannah didn't know the magnificent work that God was calling Samuel to. Yes. But there, there's things bigger than us that we can't see. See, in God's timing, it was time for God to deal with Eli and his family. Yes. Yes. Verse 3 mentions that when, when Elkanah took his family to worship, that Hophni and Phinehas yes. were the priests officiating at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was time for God to deal with the line of Eli. Mm -hmm. It was time for God to deal, and God was going to use Samuel mm -hmm. in a mighty way Amen. as a vessel. Jesus. <laughs> oh my Jesus. God. Jesus. To deal with the injustice. Mm -hmm. yes. She didn't know what she was what God was doing. Mm. But God had to prepare him mm. for the child that he was going to place in her womb. And it took time. Jesus. God said, I don't want you to have your child like everybody else. And it's soon because I'm working on something with you. Mm. I'm bringing you Jesus. to a certain place. You have to be in a certain place when I put this.
this child in your womb because there's something you need to do with this child and you have to be in the right mindset. Jesus. Amen. You're not bearing because I don't love you. Hmm. You're not bearing because I don't care about you. But you're bearing because I'm working on you. Come on now. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank yes. you. Jesus. You're bearing because I'm still working on you. I haven't forsaken you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your way is not hard because I have forsaken you. Jesus. Yes. It's not getting tough because I don't love you. Jesus. It's not getting tough because there's no place in this world for you. But God says, I'm working on something for you. Thank you, Jesus. You're different than other people. Yes, I'm making Jesus. you different. And what I'm bringing out of you is going to be Jesus. different than others. Amen. In order, to, in order to raise that different child, I Jesus. have to do some work on you. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. God was getting ready to deal yes. with the line of Eli mm -hmm. yes. and Samuel yes. and Elkanah. And Hannah was part of God's plan. Yeah, they didn't uh -huh. know it. So when he was taking his family to worship, and those two sons was there, and, and the scripture says here that he went before the Lord of hosts. When, when the scripture refers to the Lord of hosts, it's referring to God as the head of his heavenly host. Yes. But it also refers to God as the head of Israel's army. It shows God as a warrior. Mm -hmm. It shows God as a fighter. Mm -hmm. It shows God as someone that's getting ready to deal with and upturn something. Mm. So he didn't just go before God because God said, I'm, I'm, I'm changing something here. I'm getting ready to change history. And Elkanah was faithful to God. He took his family faithfully to the house in spite mm. of what they were going through, yes. in spite of the frustration. He mm. says he went faithfully to the house of God, but the scripture says he took his family before the Lord of hosts. Jesus. Because God is getting ready to, God, the Lord of hosts can deal with my situation. Mm. It, re it also refers to God as the ultimate sovereign ruler mm. of all nations and all creation. And if I take my family before the Lord of hosts, mm. he can deal with this situation yes. better than I can. Yes. Yes. He can deal with this situation better than my talking can. Yes. I'm going before the Lord of hosts, yes. the one that has all power, it is, it the one is. that has all authority, yes. the yes. one that is sovereign. I'm taking my family before the Lord of hosts because he's going to fix it one way or the other. Jesus. Amen. Yes. I can't see it now. Mm. I can't feel it now. Jesus. Right now, I'm frustrated. Jesus. Hannah, mm. right now, my heart is heavy. Mm. Right now, I can't see it. Hannah's story. So, Elkanah took them before the Lord of hosts. And the scripture wants us to understand, Elkanah took them before Almighty God. Come on, mm. worship. Come on, worship. Jesus. Before Jesus. Almighty God. We're going to go back to 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 4. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, and his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, portions. So, this is the peace offering that's taking place here. It's a peace offering. And as I briefly explained with the peace offering, the offer will come, the peace offering was an offering of thanksgiving. It was an offering of praise and worship. The Peace offering was an offering to express joy, thankfulness, happiness. The peace offering was also an offering of communion and fellowship. This is all that the peace offering involved, and this is what it was supposed to do. When that offerer would bring the peace offering, what he was doing is bringing himself into fellowship. That's worship. Yes. Fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. He was bringing himself in, making himself one with God. And not only was he bringing himself into fellowship, but he was bringing his family into fellowship with God. Yes, this is yes. what the pre peace offering did. So Elkanah, after he would place the offering on mm -hmm. the altar, after he would give his offering, I'll say it that way, after he would give his offering, after the offering was complete, part of the offering was given to the priest officiating the table, mm -hmm. he would eat it. And then the worshiper would take the remainder and divide it amongst his family. That way, there was worship and communion with God and fellowship with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the peace offering was to bring everyone around the table in union and fellowship. It was a time of joy and happiness. But I want to keep looking at Hannah. Because she was bearing and because she couldn't have children, Hannah couldn't worship as her husband was trying to lead her into worship. Yes. He was trying to 
lead his family into worship. Yes. But she couldn't. So verse 4 says that he would take, the after the offering, he would take the portion that was given to him. Yes. And he would yes. divide it up and begin to give it to Penina and all of her children. She had many kids. Hmm. That was a third negative experience for Hannah. This happened every year. Hmm. So every year she had to sit at that table and watch Penina and all her children receive their offering while she sat with no child. Every year she had to see this, the dispersing of the offering. And you said, well, that shouldn't be hard, but it's hard to someone who wants a child. Yes. It's hard to someone who has to share her husband with someone because she can't yes. have a child. Yes. Right. It's hard for, for someone, my main focus is giving Elkanah a child. Yes. And here I am once again, and it almost makes you resent coming into the house of God. Yes. I'm pointing this out because there are certain situations mm -hmm. that will make us want to say, I don't even want to go to Jesus. church. Yes. I love God. I'm not wanting to turn from God, but there's a frustration in there, yes. mm. and I don't want to deal with that frustration. Yes. I'm tired of the frustration. Yes. I wish the frustration would move. I love church. Mm -hmm. I love praising God. I love worshiping God, but there's an element in there right yes. now that yes. frustrates me so much, Jesus. I don't want to go. Right. Jesus. So Hannah, it can happen. Third, it can happen. Yes, third oh, situation yeah. here, because she was barren, because she couldn't give Elkanah a child, every year she had to sit at that table and watch the portions being passed around because it was part of the sacrifice. Yes. It had to take place. So he would pass the meat around to her and all her children. And Hannah sat there, My childless, Lord. once again not knowing what God had for her. Yeah. Not knowing what God had in her womb. Not knowing the special thing her child was going to do. Not knowing the blessings that God had at that moment all around her. She was blessed. Yes. Hannah couldn't have a child, but Hannah was blessed. Come on. Yes, she was. Hannah yes. felt lonely, sad, depressed, and heavy, but Hannah was blessed. She yes. didn't know the yes. blessings that circled her life. Mm. Yes. So yes. she had to watch that, and that was a very negative experience for Hannah. I want to go back. I want to go up to verse 5. I stopped at verse 5. Amen. Stop at verse 5. Verse 5 says, But unto Hannah, he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. Mm. But the Lord had shut up her womb. So Hannah was blessed. Elkanah loved her. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says Elkanah gave her a worthy portion. A worthy portion meant a double portion. Yes, yes. It was a double portion. And remember the peace offering. It was to bring a person into fellowship with God. Yes. It was to bring them into worship with God. And, and, and Elkanah, I'm not saying this is for sure what he was thinking, but it almost looks like Elkanah was saying, Hannah, you must worship. Mm. He gave Hannah a double portion because he loved her, but I could also see a double portion of worship. Mm. He saw the heaviness of Hannah. He saw the, the despair of Hannah. Uh -huh. He saw the frustration of Hannah. And he, out of his love for Hannah, he would give her a double portion. So whatever he was giving Panana and her children, he gave Hannah twice that much. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> he loved her. And she was just in a state now. And we and, and, and things can put us in that state. It's, it's hard sometimes to rise out of that state. But what we have to do is, is put it in God's hand. Amen. Yes. We have to turn it over to God. We have to put this situation in God's hand because yeah. it's going to take us down. And it could be a destructive element in our life. Mm -hmm. If we don't deal with it properly, it could destroy something that God is trying to build. Mm. Yes, yes. Hannah's path to breakthrough. Hannah needed a breakthrough. She couldn't go on like that. Jesus. She couldn't go on like that. Year after year, Elkanah took his family to Shiloh to worship. Mm. Year after year, Hannah went into the place where she should, be, should have been able to worship, but Hannah couldn't. She was heavy. She went in heavy, she came home heavy. Year after year, she went in heavy, she came home heavy. Yes, yes. Year after year, the elements of worship were all around her, but it couldn't take place because I'm heavy. There's something making me heavy. There's something frustrating me. Hmm. Jesus. And she needed a breakthrough. I mean, she, there, there are times when, when you can't keep going on like that. There, yes. There's a point yes. you have to do what Hannah did. We're going to see what she did. But yes. at some point, we have to Jesus. rise up. I can't keep going on like yes. this. This is going to destroy me. If mm. I keep thinking like this, sometimes it's a negative thought pattern. Mm -hmm. If I keep thinking like this, it's going to destroy me. God has something better for me. Yes. Elkanah showed his love, but Hannah, Hannah couldn't receive it because of her negative situation. Yes, yes. Because of what she was dealing with. 
And, and I'm telling you, Satan is always going to send something. You can have peace Monday, but by Wednesday you're frustrated. Mm. Satan will send the people. He'll send the circumstances. Yes. He will send the situations to keep us frustrated. Yes. Because what Satan don't want, he don't want me to make purpose. No. He don't want me to do what God has called me to do. He don't want me to become. And if he can keep me frustrated, yeah. uh -huh. my focus is on my frustration. Yes, mm. My focus is on what I can't do. Amen. My focus is on what I don't have. Amen. My focus yes. is on that yes. thing yes. that bothers me. My focus is on my situation. But God says, take your focus off of that. Yes. I'm moving. I'm working. Yes, yes. Hannah's story. So she needed her situation to change. It couldn't keep going on like it was going. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. So he gave Hannah a double portion. But then verse 5 tells us that God is the one that shut up her womb. Yes. Amen. God had a reason. And I spoke that previously. God had a reason for making Hannah yes. there. God mm -hmm. did. Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that she was just born that way, but God did it. Yes. There are times when God does things like this because God says, as I said before, I'm working on this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm moving you to a certain place. I'm preparing you for a certain place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we say, well, why would God do that? But God has a reason for all that he does. And it's God's will that I go through certain frustrations. It's God's will mm -hmm. that I'm placed in certain negative situations. Mm. And sometimes I pray, God, I can't deal with it. Take me out of this situation. But God said, it's my will Amen. that you stay in that situation. Yes. Because Amen. God is saying to mm. some individual, I have a plan for your life. I have a purpose for your life. And this frustration is part of it. Mm. It's part of it. And God is not going to lead us into any place that he can't keep That's us. That's right. God says, if I'm leading you there, I have the power to keep you. I have the power, I have the authority to keep you. But I, 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 I'm working on something with you. God allows frustrations, and he allows headaches, and he allows hardships for many different reasons. There are many different reasons why God will put us in negative situations. Hannah had, we've seen so far, at least three negative situations that she faced on a daily basis. She faced these negative sins, and you, you would say, well, well, God, why? Why? Why am I hurt so? Jesus. Why do I have to suffer so? Why am I always misunderstood? I have to be so careful in my conversations because yes. it, if I say, and it can happen so quickly, a yes. general conversation, yes. and now it's a blow-up because someone didn't understand what I was saying. Why yes. is that yes. God? Mm. Jesus. 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 But God Jesus. says, I have a plan for everything you go Jesus. through. Yes. I have a plan for everything you mm. suffer. God says, seek me. Seek me. Amen. Elkanah took his family to God every year. Every year he took his family. He took the entire family. Every year. And you can go into the house of God where there's so much power and authority. And you can walk out the same way Amen. and you don't grab it. Amen. Amen. You don't Amen. grab it. It's there for you. Mm -hmm. In God's word, mm. whenever we need to stand, is in the word of God. It's in the presence of God. But I can walk in and walk out the same way because God's will is that I receive the strength to stand. God's will is that I turn to him with my whole heart. Mm -hmm. God's will is that that situation is not to destroy me and to take me out. But God's will is that situation is shaping me. Yes. That yes. situation is forming me. Yes. That situation is preparing me for purpose. Yes. That's what it's all about. That's God's will. And what God does is his will is just his will. I, I can't contend with God and say, God, why? Yes. It's his will. Yes. And yes. God's will is the representation of his sovereign authority. And God can use people and individuals in whatever capacity he yes. so desires. Yes, yes, yes. yes. His will moves his purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it does. Mm. His will moves yes. his purpose. Yes. So I must yes, stay in the will of God. I must mm. stay in God's will. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Verse 6. Verse 6. Her adversary also provoked her mm -hmm. sore yes. for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And Penina provoked Hannah. That's her fourth negative situation. She was provoked on a regular basis by this young lady. And what Penina used to provoke Hannah was the very thing that disturbed Hannah. Yes. Mm. Because she
because she couldn't have children. Amen. And she used that to provoke this young lady. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it says that Panana provoked her sore. Mm -hmm. That means Panana constantly provoked Hannah. Panana severely provoked Hannah. It wasn't just every now and then saying something and every now and then doing something. But when the scripture says she provoked Hannah sore, she provoked her severely. Mm -hmm. she did. Scripture doesn't say what she did, but she was severe in her provoking yes. Hannah. She yes. made sure Hannah knew every day that she was barren. I can imagine. Come on, come on, come on. Every day she used her children to make sure Hannah understood that she was barren. I yes. believe she did that. I believe every day she made sure Hannah felt less than a woman. Uh -huh. I believe she did that. I believe every day Panana made sure Hannah understood yes. that she couldn't do what she was doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because she was able to give Elkanah children. Yes. I believe every day, every day Panana had the opportunity. She used it. Like yes. I, 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 I can imagine. The Bible says she yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hannah sore. She did. Mm -hmm. And the Bible also says she calls Hannah to fret. That means she calls her to be miserable. Mm -hmm. She made Hannah's life miserable. Mm -hmm. This is the young lady that lived in her house. This is the young lady that she shared her husband with. Mm -hmm. This is the young lady that she saw, she saw having child, child after child after child, and she couldn't have a child. She provoked Hannah. And you will say, well, God, why would you let this happen to Hannah? What, what did she ever do that you caused her to be in this particular situation? But mm -hmm. I want us to understand that God has a reason. God yes. has a purpose yes, for the hardships that we suffer. God has a purpose. And God says, stand through it. You can mm. stand. Trust my word. Turn to my word and you mm. can stand. Yes. But Hannah was made miserable mm. by this young lady. It's almost as if Satan took control over this young lady. And, and this young lady's mindset possibly could have been to destroy Hannah. Mm -hmm. Panana had almost made up her mind, I want to destroy. And as I look at Panana, I can almost see jealousy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It was there. Mm -hmm. yeah, because the scripture says that in spite yeah, 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 yeah. of Hannah not giving him one child, mm -hmm. Elkanah loved her more. Oh, right. yes. Every time Panana had another child, maybe she thought, now he's going to love me. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to be number one. But every child she had, no matter how many kids she had, Elkanah loved Hannah. Mm -hmm. No matter how many children she had, at the sacrifice, Elkanah gave Hannah a double, double portion. portion. Come on. El Man. Elkanah favored Hannah. He wasn't yes. trying to mm -hmm. show favor. Mm -hmm. He just loved her more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's why I say Hannah was blessed, but she couldn't receive the blessing. Her mm -hmm. husband loved her. Jesus. In spite of the fact that she could not give him one child, mm -hmm. he loved her. Mm -hmm. He says, Hannah, it's not about the children. I love you. Uh -huh. You never give me a child, Hannah. I love you. Yes. But yes. Hannah was jealous with she was envious. She was Jesus. so jealous. She couldn't see straight. Mm -hmm. And she frustrated Hannah's life, I, I want to say sometimes, out of her envy. Mm -hmm. Out yeah. of her yeah. jealousy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know why he loves you so. You can't give him a child, but he don't love me like that. Jesus. He loves he loved uh -huh. Hannah, uh -huh. but he loved Hannah more. Yeah. Uh -huh. So sometimes envy and jealousy will cause someone to provoke someone yeah. else. Mm -hmm. God allows this sometimes. God allows mm -hmm. the hardships. God knows people's mind and people's heart. God sees them. Yes. He knows where they are. He also sees you. He knows your frustrations. He knows what you're going through. But God will not put you anywhere where you cannot be kept. Yes. Oh, she provoked. Yes. Hannah yes. provoked yes. Hannah. Jesus. She used the fact that Hannah was barren to provoke her. Yes, she, did. she used the fact that her womb was fertile and fruitful to provoke Hannah. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And sometimes... Jesus. Not all the time, but sometimes when you're placed in a situation like that, provoking will cause you to start competing. That's right. Wow. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on, come mm -hmm. on. Competing for something you don't have to compete for. That's right. Uh -huh. Come on. Uh -huh. God has something for you. Uh -huh. Jesus. God has a plan that far uh -huh. exceeds what's happening in this house mm -hmm. right now. Sure. And you're a part of the plan. Uh -huh. Wait for the revelation. Please. Amen. Please. Don't strike back. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's God. That's God. Amen. Because if, he can bring, if, if Satan can That's bring God. something out of me that should not be brought out, I lose my place. Yes. Yes, you will. Take your time. Mm -hmm. If he calls me to compete for someone, and God says, What I have for you far exceeds what they're doing, mm -hmm. what I have for you far exceeds where they are right now.
right now. Yes, they look like they have the upper hand, but I'm working on you. I'm working on a situation in your life right now. Come on. Stay in perspective. Mm -hmm. Wait on me. Trust me. Don't yes. let their provoking cause you to step out of place. Right. Okay, so let's stay low. You better lay low. <laughs> Come on, you better lay amen. low. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes. amen. Oh, amen. 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 So God, help me to stay in place. Yeah, Amen. yeah, 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 yeah. Help me to stay below radar. Yeah, stay <laughs> low. Yeah, stay low. Yeah. But God, God is doing something in our lives. God is working on something in your life right now, today. Uh -huh. You might not see it, but God is working on something in your lives right now. And God says, stay faithful. Mm. Don't let someone Jesus. else's attitude push uh -huh. you into a place of attitude. Uh-huh. That's not where your blessing is. That's not where your prosperity is. Keep your mind focused. Jesus, amen. <laughs> Stay focused. I know you're in a bad place. I know they're saying stuff out of your mouth right now. Jesus. I know they're threatening you right now. I know they're talking you down and talking about Jesus. you right now. Sometimes you even question who you are because of the things they say. <laughs> she didn't Jesus. feel like a woman sometimes. Mm. She didn't feel like a blessing from God sometimes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just talking about her negative situation. Hannah had to go through some things. Hannah suffered yes. because, of, because she was barren. Hannah suffered. But God was with Hannah. Mm -hmm. Amen. God was with Hannah. Verse 8, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 8. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, Why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? You see that? Mm. Elkanah loved her. And Elkanah, every chance, every opportunity, I believe, mm. he received, he showed her love. He didn't uh -huh. cancel out Penina. I'm not saying he disrespected her in any way. He loved her too. He, he provided for both his wives. Mm -hmm. He took his entire family to worship. He gave portions to everybody. But there was a love that he had for Hannah. Yes, he and he said, Hannah, I love you. Mm. And I'm better to you than ten sons, Hannah. But you see, sometimes when you're in a situation, you mm. can't see mm. the blessing all around you. Mm. You can't Jesus. see the love of God all around you. Jesus. Because all I can see is my negative circumstances. I all I can see is my negative situation. But I can't see the blessings of God have overshadowed me. The blessings of mm. God has overtaken me. And not only that, God has a plan for my life that far excels my circumstance right now. But she couldn't Jesus. see it because mm. of Panana's provoking, Jesus. coupled with her negative circumstances, mm -hmm. Hannah could not receive the love from her husband or from God. Something had to change. Amen. She couldn't go on like that. With the quickness. But this was all part of God's plan. Uh huh. Jesus. Because the word says God made her barren. And when God made Hannah barren, God knew every tear she was going to cry because mm. of the fact that she was barren. Yes. yes. God knew every conversation she was going to have because she was barren. Amen. God knew all of the fretting she was going to experience because she was barren. Mm. God knew the tears she was going to cry, the shame she was going to feel. Mm. God mm. knew that Panana was going to provoke her because she was barren. God knew the situation that Hannah was going to have to endure, but he placed her in mm. that situation because what God had for her was far greater than her situation. Jesus. Sometimes God will use the headache, the mm. heartache, the hardships, Jesus. the misunderstandings, the nights you have to sit up all night crying. Jesus. God says, I, I know, I saw, I put you in that place, and mm. when I put you in there, I know you felt like sometimes you were going to die right then and there. Jesus. Sometimes you felt like you were never coming out. You felt like you were in a prison. You didn't feel my hand. You didn't feel my, my mm. solace at that time. You felt all alone, but God says, I was with you, and I was holding you up. You felt like giving up, but guess what? Mm. You didn't. Yes. Jesus. You Thank didn't you give Jesus. up. You didn't give in because I was holding you up. Thank you, Jesus. But I had to use these negative situations. Yes. I had to use that, the, the tears. I had to use the misunderstanding. Yes. I had to yes. use the heartache. I had to use the heartbreak because I was pushing you to purpose. Jesus. Jesus. So Hannah needed a breakthrough. Mm. 
a breakthrough is to overcome a certain barrier or a certain obstacle. There was a barrier in Hannah's life that she had to overcome because she had to fulfill God's purpose. So when you have a breakthrough, that means you overcome or you excel something that was holding you back. And we, we can excel in this world. We can become the president of the United States mm -hmm. but still be walking behind a certain barrier. Yes. Hannah needed a breakthrough. She needed a breakthrough in her circumstances. Mm -hmm. As I said before, she couldn't go on like that because what God had for her, that situation was a hindrance. It was an impediment. She needed a breakthrough in her circumstance, but also Hannah needed a breakthrough into her purpose. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Her circumstance, she had to experience a breakthrough in her circumstance in order to experience a breakthrough in her purpose. If she didn't break through that circumstance, she would not be able to break through into her purpose. Yes, yes, yes. She had to have a breakthrough. And God was pushing her to break through. Every negative situation that Hannah was experiencing, even Penana's causing her to fret, Penana's teasing. Penana's harsh words, yeah. Penana throwing it in her face, I have children and you don't. Mm. It was pushing Hannah to break through. There are times that I, when, we, when you're going through a hard situation, you don't, you don't love the individual bringing the hardship. <laughs> you don't love the, mm. the, 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 the situation itself. Mm -hmm. But as I think on this, as I look at Hannah's story, it pushed me to break through. Mm -hmm. So I thank God for the tears I had to cry. Yes. Yes. I thank God for those people who mistreated me. Yes. Yes. I thank God for those people who took advantage of my kindness. Yes. 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 Yeah, my feelings were hurt. Yes, I, I cried some nights. I went through, but I thank God because those situations pushed me to break through. Because of that, and the thing is, and this is what God is saying, my will is my will, and my desire for you has been set, but I have given you the, the opportunity to choose which way you're going to go. Okay. I can use my hardships and shut down in life and just wow. give up. Wow. My life is too hard. I, somebody can say that. I, I don't care anymore. Mm. I'm not going to try Jesus. anymore because mm. God is the one that did this to me. I don't want to serve God anymore. Mm. I don't want to hear a scripture. Jesus. <laughs> I don't want nobody teaching or preaching nothing to me because Jesus. God put me in this place. Mm. So some people can do that to some people. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. God took my loved one. I don't yeah. want to serve God yeah. anymore. Yeah. God made my life hard. God, God could have, God could have made it easy for me, but He gave me a hard life. Mm -hmm. He let, the, He let these people hurt me. I don't want God. Jesus. It can do that to you, mm -hmm. or it can push you to run. Mm -hmm. Hardships can make yes. you, can push you to the point of saying, "I can do better than this." Mm -hmm. I want greater than this. Yes. Yes. This is not my story. It's not how my story is going to end, rather. Mm -hmm. This is not how my story is going to end. God has something great for me. Yes. I don't care how hard my life is getting. I'm running towards what God has. Amen. I'm, I will not, I refuse to allow these circumstances to cause me to shut down and give up and give in. Not mm -hmm. when I know God has something for me to do. Mm -hmm. Hannah's story. Jesus. Hannah's mm -hmm. story. She went through some stuff. Mm. The scripture said it was God that shut up her womb. Yes, it was. Uh -huh. It was God that shut up her womb. He did. It was yes. God that shamed her. Yes. Thank you, God. But God says, I did it for a reason. Thank you. Amen. God. I did it for your strength. Thank you. Hannah's breakthrough. Hannah Jesus. needed a breakthrough. As Jesus. I said before, Hannah had Samuel in her womb. She didn't know that. Mm. And God had some great. Something very great for Samuel to yes. do. Hannah didn't know that. Uh -huh. Hannah didn't see beyond her circumstance. She couldn't see her future. She couldn't mm. see a future child because her womb was shut up. Mm. She didn't understand there's a future child in my womb that God is going to use greatly. Mm. Mm. And I'm standing for that. I said before in opening this lesson, when you stand in the place that God has called you to stand in, somebody cried for you to stand in that place. Somebody went through some hard times for you to stand in that place. Right. Somebody had to contend with the devil himself Jesus. so you can stand <laughs> in that place. Mm. Jesus. Yeah. Mm. It was a fight. Jesus. It was a fight. Mm. So that you can stand in that place. Hannah's breakthrough. Verse Jesus. 9. Hannah's breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. 
still fight. Mm -hmm. Hannah's breakthrough, verse 9. So Hannah, remember her situation. Panana frustrating her because she was barren. Mm. Possibly her husband taking another wife because she was barren. Mm. That second wife having child after child after child. She, she couldn't have one child. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Going to the annual feast mm -hmm. and seeing Panana and all her children around the table. She's sitting there with no child. Elkanah taking her to the place of worship mm -hmm. and what Elkanah was doing with his family. He was bring, ushering them into worship. Mm -hmm. He was ushering Penanah into worship. He was ushering Hannah into worship. He was ushering his sons and daughters into worship. Mm -hmm. Meaning that he was ushering them into communion with God. Every time he took them to that offering, mm -hmm. that annual mm -hmm. sacrifice, he was bringing them into communion with God, into mm -hmm. relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Hannah went sad and heavy every year, came back sad and heavy. Jesus. But now I went every year with a frustrating demon controlling her, Jesus. and she came back home carrying that same frustrating demon. <laughs> year after year it happened. You said, well, my God, how long? Jesus. Year after year it happened. Hannah came back home the same way, heavy, sad, depressed. But now came back home the same way, running her mouth. Jesus. No change. So, took them to the place of worship. <coughs> they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't walk into the right relationship with God. It's mm -hmm. a mindset and it's a decision that we all have to make. You can come into the building. Yes. Yes. But you yes. have to set your mind on God. Thank you God. have to tell God, this is the day. Mm -hmm. I want my life to change. Yes. This Amen. is the day I turn my life over yes. to you. Amen. This is the day, God, I want you moving miraculously in my life. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. I've, been, I've, been, I've come in here year Jesus. after year. Sunday after Sunday, Friday after Friday, Jesus. come into the building and go out the same way. Jesus. But at some point, you have to make up your mind not today. Amen. Satan been riding your back for years. Jesus. Satan been controlling your mind and your heart for years. Jesus. Satan been causing you to feel negative about Jesus. yourself for years. Jesus. Satan been telling you lies for years. But God said, at what point are you going to stand Jesus. up and say, not so. not so. It's time for you to get off. Amen. 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 In Jesus' no name. Amen. Rise. It's time for my breakthrough. Yes. Today is my day of breakthrough, and Hannah made that decision this particular year when Jesus. they went to offer, and she sat at that table with her head down. I can just picture it. Uh -huh. Don't say it. Sat at the table as, as, it, as it happened every year mm. with her head down, shoulders slumped, mm. <laughs> not eating, not worshiping, because you had to eat. Part of the worship service was to eat from the altar. Mm. That brought you into fellowship with God. You had to eat from the altar. The scripture says she couldn't eat because she was too heavy. Jesus. Mm. And she sat at that table in that state year after year Jesus. after year after year. But this particular time, Hannah made a very profound decision that changed her life. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It changed her life. Amen. Amen. And God says, make a decision. You made the right decision. Mm -hmm. It'll change yes, it will. your destiny. Mm -hmm. I have already said it, but I just need you to walk it. Yes, yes. You're not forming your destiny. I've already formed it. Jesus. I've already set it in place, but what I need you to do Jesus. is walk what I have formed. And circumstances and situations will try to interfere with that. Yes. And you need a breakthrough. Jesus. Hannah's breakthrough, verse 9, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Verse 9. This is her breakthrough. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. So at this point in Hannah's life is when she made that profound decision. Mm -hmm. Hannah decided that first she changed her focus. Mm -hmm. Yes. She had to change her focus. This is Hannah's breakthrough. Mm. She had to change her focus. Amen. The focus is that main thing, your main point of interest or your main point yes. of activity. That's your focus. What your mind is Jesus. set on. Uh -huh. What your thought pattern is set on, mm -hmm. that's your focus. And before this situation, Hannah's focus was on her being barren. Mm -hmm. Hannah's focus was on the fact that Panana had many children. Yes. yes. Hannah's yes. focus was on the, the way Panana was making her feel. That's mm -hmm. where her focus was. 
Her focus was on maybe all the negative things that she thought the community was saying about her. Her focus was on how she felt about herself. She probably felt less than a woman because she couldn't give her husband children. So her focus was on all of those negative aspects of her life. That's where her focus was. But Hannah, mm -hmm. the first stage in Hannah's breakthrough is she had to change her focus. Yes. Yes. She had to change her focal point. She had to change what she what she considered to be important in life. Mm -hmm. yes. She yes. had to change that. Mm -hmm. She needed a breakthrough and she started by changing her focus. Mm -hmm. And when Hannah changed her focus, the scripture says she rose up. That's mm -hmm. the second part of Hannah's breakthrough. Mm -hmm. She rose up. Mm -hmm. When Hannah rose up, she stood beyond her circumstances. She stood beyond the headache, the heartache, the crying, Jesus. the suffering, the pain. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. She stood up beyond what Panana was saying about her, how Panana was using her words and her conversation to hurt her. Mm -hmm. Santana rose up. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Jesus. She stood up. Mm -hmm. She left the place of heartache. When Hannah rose up, I can almost see it falling off of her. When Hannah rose up, she, lost, she left the place of sorrow. Yes. When Hannah rose up, she left the place of sadness. Jesus. When yes. Hannah said, I, I'm fighting for a breakthrough now. God is pushing Let Hannah to a press. Hannah yes. said, I have the press beyond yes. what I'm right. feeling right now. I have the press beyond the hurt. I have the press beyond the anger. I have the yes. press beyond the misunderstanding. Yes. I have the press beyond the heart of yes. heart talk. I have to press beyond a headache. I have to press beyond this. It's time for my breakthrough. Yes. Amen. And I'm rising above it. Jesus. I'm rising above it. I can't let it weigh me down anymore. And God says, I know I put it in you. I put breakthrough in you. Breakthrough is in you. If you're a child of God, breakthrough is in you. Yes. Amen. Because you must break through to obtain. Yes. yes. Thank you. Amen. You must break through to obtain. Hardships force you to break through. Before she stood up, Hannah was engulfed in her situation. But when Hannah stood up, she shed that. She shed that. And Hannah realized it's, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. And that's that's what we all must come to. It's not about me. It's not about where men say I can stand. Mm. It's not about where men say I can't stand. Mm. It's not about all of the elementary things in life, mm -hmm. but it's about God. And it's about what I can do for God. Mm. Not what I want God to do for me. And I'm not saying don't pray for stuff. <coughs> Keep praying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep praying. But my main focus if he answers that prayer, I thank you, God. But my focus is not on what I want from God right now. That was Hannah at that moment. It's what can I do for God? Yes. He is the Lord of hosts. He is God Almighty. Mm -hmm. He is sovereign. She had to come to that understanding. She had to be taken into the place of worship. There's a certain place she never tapped into. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Hannah rose up and she went into the house of God. And the priest even <coughs> was there officiating and serving at that time. Mm -hmm. And Hannah went before God. And verse 10 lets us know, it says that she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. So even when she rose up, she rose up representing her walking away from her circumstances, yes. her situation. Yes. But as she stood before God, she was praying to God. And the scripture says that she was in bitterness. Mm -hmm. Hannah, Hannah, her heart was still heavy. Yes. Yes. yes, she had made a decision to turn it over to God. Jesus. And what I like about this, Elkanah had been bringing Hannah to worship year after year after right. year after year after year. But on this day, Hannah said, I'm going myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for my husband to take me, not disregarding her husband. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for him to take me to worship. I need to get to God right now. Yes. I'm not waiting for the service. I need to get to God right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for the church mm -hmm. doors to open. I need to get to God right now. Uh -huh. There's some point in our relationship with God, and God brings us to that point where he says, you need me, and you need me now. Mm -hmm. Jesus. So she, she went oh, into the Jesus. temple. She couldn't wait for protocol. Mm -hmm. She had to go before God. Mm -hmm. Right now. Right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Because I need a change in my situation right now. right now. I need a breakthrough right now. I can't keep going on like this. 
Yes. I need a breakthrough. Yes. Amen. She went into the house of God, and Eli was standing there at that time in the house of God. He was the priest officiating in the house of God at that time. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says that when Hannah went, she was still in bitterness of soul. Mm -hmm. Her 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 mind's her her heart set had not changed. She was not feeling better about her circumstance. She just knew. I need a change. Mm -hmm. And she went into the house of God. And the scripture said that she was praying and she was weeping and she mm -hmm. was crying. Her soul was bitter because of her situation. Mm -hmm. And it pushed her to the place of her soul was heavy. And I can I can picture Hannah standing there. She's just crying. Mm -hmm. And she was no, she was probably swaying back and forth. Mm -hmm. She was probably moving her head from side to side. Mm -hmm. Sometimes her head would be down. Yeah. Sometimes she would look up to God like this. Mm -hmm. She could have waved her hand Jesus. sometimes. Sometimes you could have turned around because you know how sometimes you're just praying, you see you stopping your feet sometimes, and sometimes you turn it in a circle. You're trying to let God know just how frustrating your situation is. And Hannah, to look at Hannah, you couldn't tell what was going on. And Eli saw him. Mm -hmm. Eli stood by the post, looking at this young lady, not mm -hmm. knowing the situation, Jesus. not knowing the circumstance, not knowing that God is moving right now. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Sometimes we can look at something and look Jesus. one way. Yes. yes. We're not trying to hurt anybody, mm. but it looks one way. Yes. But God was moving on Hannah. God yes. was pushing Jesus. Hannah to purpose. The very place that she was in is where God wanted her to be. Mm -hmm. The state that she was in was where God wanted her to be. Mm. Yes. And Eli looked upon this situation. He mm. didn't understand what was going on. And by mm. the way Hannah looked, that's why I say she could have been putting on a show. Mm -hmm. She looked drunk. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what he thought. Mm -hmm. She looked like she was drunk in the temple. Mm -hmm. And Eli approached her. And asked her, how long are you going to come before the Lord, come into the house of God drunk? Mm. So what Eli had thought, that she was standing in the house of God drunk, and it wasn't the first time. Mm. Yes. <laughs> she had done it before from Eli's perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, when you're in the process of breakthrough, mm -hmm. sometimes, not all the time, but there are times when you are in the process of breakthrough, mm -hmm. and misunderstanding rears its ugly head. Mm -hmm. Jesus. God was moving on this young lady. Uh -huh. This young lady had gotten to the place that God wanted her to be in. But somebody mm -hmm. looking at her couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. And he was a priest. He had great discernment. Mm -hmm. Eli had great discernment. But at that moment, God hid it from him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because God is still working on him. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Because she remembers she's experiencing yes. many negative situations. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're right at the door of purpose. And, and, and something negative will happen. Mm. And it'll send you all the way back. Yes. Mm. And God says, you were right there. Yes. You were right there. Yes. You were right there. But she could have gotten upset. Yes. She could have gotten angry. Mm. She could have charged Eli. I'm not drunk. Who do you think? She could have, but she didn't yes. do anything. She humbled herself before the yes. man of God. Mm -hmm. And she explained her situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. it seems like a mm -hmm. lot of times Satan is pushing and Satan is pushing and Satan yes. is pushing. Yes. But it's God's hand in it. Mm. Even with Kanana, she was used, and sometimes we want to say Satan used her, mm -hmm. and he, he could have well used her as well, but I want to say God used her. Mm -hmm. God allowed her Jesus. nature uh -huh. to overtake her, Yes, yes. because he could have stopped it, but he didn't. Uh -huh. and, and even when the priest, Eli, he was the high priest at that time, when he looked upon Hannah, and saw her going through her process of breaking. That's what it was all about. Mm. All of the swaying, all of the crying, all of the shaking her head and rolling back. It was mm. her process of breakthrough. She was mm. fighting for a breakthrough. Mm. That young lady was crying and fighting mm. for a breakthrough. It was time yes. for her breakthrough. God was Jesus. pulling her to purpose. And God had her at the door of breakthrough. That's what it was all about. It was a spiritual thing going on. Uh -huh. Yes, we saw the physical body. Eli saw the physical body. But God had her in his hand. Yes. And God was pulling her to breakthrough. Yes. And in yes. that process, she looked like she was a drunk lady. But God's hand was in it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And when she explained her situation to Eli, Eli understood what she was saying. And Eli blessed yes. Hannah. <clears throat> See, when, when, when there's misunderstanding sometimes, and it's not mm. easy, but we have to humble ourselves yes. and allow it to play out. Because mm. God says, even in that is your blessing. Yes. Mm. Jesus. Even in that misunderstanding, Jesus. It's, your blessing is going to Jesus. come out of that. Yes. Mm. yes. Your blessing is going to come out of that misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Don't get mm. riled up because someone misunderstands you. Mm. Don't get all riled up. Jesus. And even sometimes you say, but that's a person of God. They should see 
They should know, but sometimes God hides it from them oh, because yes, God is yes. working on you, Jesus. Jesus. You say, God, God, I know they can see. Why didn't they see this? Jesus. Why didn't they see the truth in this situation? Yes. Why are they able to see the a lie? Can't you show them the truth? And God says, not now. One day I'll reveal truth to them, but yes. today they have to misunderstand this. That's right. Jesus. Today they have to see you in a certain light. Yes. 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 They're not bad people. They're Jesus. not seen people. But God said, this is your process Hallelujah. for breakthrough. Mm. This is your process yes. for breakthrough. Yes. So when Eli heard what was going on, he blessed her. He said, may God give you what you asked for. Mm -hmm. And when Hannah was in the temple prayer, I want to go back to what she was praying for. Uh -huh. Thank you, God. I want to go, go to what Hannah was praying for. In verse 11, Hannah began to pray. And as Hannah began to pray, Hannah addressed God as the Lord of hosts. The same address that was in the earlier part of our lesson as Elkanah took his family to the house of worship in verse 3 and, and God was referred to as the Lord of hosts so when Hannah went in to pray to God and I want to read that in verse 11 and she vowed a vow and said O Lord of hosts she called God the Lord of hosts mm. she, and we know what that Lord of hosts we spoke about that she was letting God know you're sovereign mm. God you are sovereign you control all creation mm. God, you can fight the battle that I am in right now. My, my heart is heavy. My spirit is, is in a, I'm in a spirit of bitterness right mm. now, God. Yes. My heart is heavy right now, God. But God, I, I'm addressing you. I'm coming before you as Lord of hosts because I know you can change my situation. I know you can deal with that adversary that's on my back. I know yes. you can deal with the fact that I am barren. I know you can Jesus. do it, God. I need a breakthrough right now, and I know you're the God that's going to give me the mm. breakthrough. So I'm yes. going to address you as a Lord of hosts because you are mighty God. You are a warrior. You are a fighter, God. And you bring justice. Yes. So yes. I'm coming to you as someone needing justice Thank right you, now, God. Plead my case. Plead my cause. Look upon your servant right now, God, is what she's saying to God. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm calling him Lord of hosts. I'm your servant. Look upon me. Look yes. upon my situation. Look upon my circumstance. Yes. And that's the fourth step in Hannah's breakthrough. She turned it over to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. She turned it over to God. Yes, yes. She put that situation in God's hand. Mm -hmm. She didn't try to deal with it herself. She put it in God's hand. The first step, she changed her focus. The second step, she rose up. Mm -hmm. And she left that situation behind her. Mm -hmm. The third step, she went into the temple. And the fourth step, she turned it over to God. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. She turned it over to God. Mm -hmm. And she says, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, yes, yes. and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and mm. there shall no razor come upon his head. That's what she was praying. That's what Hannah was praying. And she made a promise to God. When, 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 when Hannah turned her situation over to God, Hannah realized it's, it's not about what I want God to do for me, and it's not about what I want God to give to me, but I have something that I can give to God. My focus now is on God. How can I bless God? Yes. How can I give to God? What can I do for God? It's not about me anymore. I'm taking the focus off of me. If I uh -huh. never have a child, it's not about me giving, giving mm. my husband a child. No, I'm praying for that, but if he don't do it, mm. it's about God. I want to bless God, mm -hmm. and this is the place that God wanted Hannah to be in. Mm. Hannah vowed her child. She said, you give me a child, I'll give him to you all the days of his life. Uh -huh. She vowed him to God as a Nazarite. We know what the Nazarite vow was all about. Uh -huh. you know, someone wanted to be a Nazarite <coughs> is, is, is someone who wanted to give themselves to God on the, for a very particular reason. Mm. And sometimes they would do it for a certain amount of time. And sometimes people would vow as a Nazarite for their life. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to honor God in a certain way, and they would do a Nazarite vow. Mm -hmm. So she said, I'll give him to you yes. as a Nazarite. And Nazarite means consecrated to the Lord. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm consecrated. If you give me a child, I will consecrate him to you all the days of his life. Oh, it shows a separation. Nazarite <laughs> also means separated unto the Lord. Mm. But she was saying, well, if you give me a child, and this is what God wanted from Hannah. Uh -huh. He said, and I can see this, God had Samuel in her womb, God had Samuel designed for Hannah, but before God could give Samuel to Hannah, 
Hannah had to be in a place that she was willing to give Samuel wholeheartedly back to God. Because yes. yes. God says, I'm giving you the child, but I want him. Mm -hmm. I want him back. And I need a mindset. If I give him Jesus. to you too soon, you won't be able to give him up like yes. that. Jesus. But if you go through hurt, heartache, Jesus. hard times, suffering, if you get to the place of being pressed, Jesus. if you get to the place of seeing me as God, if you get to the place of just wanting to please me and no one else, and God, yes. that's what I want from you. Mm -hmm. I need your utmost dedication. Mm -hmm. He says, when I give you this son, when I give you this son, he has to be turned over to me. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the mindset, because we have children now, special children are born all the time. Yes. But their parents are not in the mindset to dedicate that child That's to it. God. That's That's right. Right. Because That's of their lifestyle. Right. Right. Yes. They don't have the understanding, this is God's child, and mm -hmm. I must dedicate this child to God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Every parent don't have that understanding. No. And they let the child get into things and do certain things that shapes their life. Jesus. And God has to go in a shape in order to use them. Mm -hmm. He'll do it. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. He says, I need Samuel. What I have for Samuel. So it's not about you, Hannah. It's not about your empty womb, mm -hmm. Hannah. It's not about the hurt, the cries, the tears, the pain. It's, not, it's, it's what I wanted from you. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. It's what I had for Samuel to do. Mm -hmm. And what I had Sam, for Samuel to do, I had to have you in a state that when he comes, you turn him over to me. Put him back into my hands. Mm -hmm. yes. You can't even raise your own son. Mm. And a mother doesn't want, they can't receive that too heartily. Mm. Yes, yes. God, you're going to give me a child that I can't even raise? But that's what God had for Samuel because it's all, it was about Samuel. But Hannah, as the mother, had to persevere. She had to go through some things and God had to push her to the point of breakthrough so that she would make this vow. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Jesus. Yes. And when, and when he put Samuel in her womb, she did it. Mm. She was able to do what God was asking her to yes. do. Jesus. And that's why God says, take your focus off of what you're going through. It's something I'm calling you to. Right. And the only way to get you to that place sometimes is your heart life. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So she made that Nazarite vow. That, and, and she said for the, his life, sometimes the Nazarite vow was only for 30 days mm -hmm. or for a few months. Yes. We know there were some people in the Bible, Samson, Samuel and John the Baptist were yes. Nazarites for life. Jesus. They were dedicated to God for mm. life. That vow means dedicated wholeheartedly to God. Separated from this world for the use of God. God wanted Samuel. Mm. In order to get Samuel at the degree he wanted it, he had to take Hannah through. Because he had to bring Hannah to the place that she would be willing to give her son up mm. to this degree. So she made that vow that if God gave her a son, Jesus, Jesus, and then as, as she began to pray, that's when Eli saw her. I won't read all of that because I said in verses 12 and 14 is when Eli saw her and accused her of being drunk. And when Eli told Hannah, verses 15 through 16, Eli told Hannah that, and Hannah began to explain to Eli that she was not drunk. And that she was praying to God for something. And that's when um, Eli told her in verses 15 through 17 that she was going to have what she asked for. Mm -hmm. Eli promised Hannah that she was going to receive what she asked for. Mm -hmm. And Hannah, whole continence changed. I want to read verse 18. After Hannah received her breakthrough in the fifth step and Hannah's breakthrough, she blessed God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the fifth step. That's the fifth step in her breakthrough. She blessed God. When she vowed her son to God, she had decided, I'm going to bless God. Mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of asking God to bless me, I want to bless God. Yes. And I'm here to tell you, I think about when David wanted to build God a house. And I'm not saying do this mm -hmm. for that reason. But when you have a heart to bless God, God is going to bless you and you can't out-bless God. No, you can't. Mm -mm. No, you can't. <laughs> So in her breakthrough, part of her process of breakthrough, she blessed God mm -hmm. by saying that she would give her son to God yes. as a Nazarite. Yes. I want to go to verse 18. After Hannah's breakthrough, after she went into the temple, after she prayed in the manner in which she prayed, after Eli touched and agreed on her prayer, Yes. that's what he did. He touched and agreed. And he asked God to give her what she was asking for. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God blessed Hannah, um, her whole continence changed. That's what the scripture says. 
18 says, and she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. Hey. Whereas she could not eat, whereas she could not worship, hey. now Hannah can eat. Uh -huh. Now Hannah can worship. Yes. Now Hannah's heart is full of joy. And I can imagine as Hannah, when Hannah walked into the temple, she was weighing down. If I can picture her, because the scripture says she was in bitterness, and she was heavy. She was grieved. I can imagine her walking into the temple with her head down mm. and just a little sadness to herself, a little sad step walking into the temple, you know, just going into the mm -hmm. temple. But when uh -huh. she came out of that temple, I can imagine <laughs> Hannah's head was up. Uh -huh. I can imagine her shoulders were square. Uh -huh. And I can imagine Hannah had a smile on her face. Mm -hmm. and Hannah had a pep in her step. Uh -huh. Hannah began to walk back to Elkanah. Uh -huh. Hannah began to walk back to Panana. Uh -huh. Hannah began to walk back to all of Panana's children. Uh -huh. Her consciousness was different. Uh -huh. She began to sit at the table. I know Panana looked at her. Ready to say something to her. You uh -huh. know? Ready to begin to dig into her. Uh -huh. And she saw Hannah pick up the fork and began to eat. And she jumped and looked. Mm -hmm. She's different now. Uh -huh. It's yes. not the same Hannah that I'm used to seeing around the table. Yes. It's not the same Hannah yes. that I'm used to seeing in the worship service. I'm yes. telling you, when you have your breakthrough, mm -hmm. when you turn your situation over to God, and when you experience mm -hmm. your breakthrough, mm -hmm. God changes your continence. Yes. When Hannah walked back to the table, she was still bearing. Mm -hmm. When Hannah walked back to the table, Panana and all her children were still there. Uh -huh. When Hannah walked back to the yes. table, her mm -hmm. was passing out the, the, the portions as he always did. Yes. But Hannah was happy now. Hannah had joy in her yes. spirit. Yes. Yes. Hannah's continence was no longer sad because yes. Hannah had met God for herself. Yes. Hannah yes. says, I'm not just going into the temple and coming out the same way. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm going to go in and pray. When yes. Hannah went into the temple, she prays and worshiped yes. herself. Mm -hmm. She had her own little worship service with God. And when she came back to the table, she was able to worship with the family. Amen. And you've seen that before. Year after year, year after year, yes. Hannah is. Yes. Now Hannah is worshiping. Mm -hmm. Now Hannah is able to worship with God. Now Hannah is able to worship with her family. Uh -huh. Hannah went back home with a different person. Jesus. Hannah had joy. I can see her around the house now. She do her house where she sing a little song. Uh -huh. And she do her house where she's doing a little dance every now and then. Uh -huh. yeah. And she doing her house where, you know, there's joy uh -huh. in her heart. Jesus. Amen. And she see the neighbors walking down the street where she used to shut the window and put her Jesus. head down. Because she was there and now she's waving her hand. God bless you, Mrs. Green. God bless you, Mrs. Green. Amen. Yeah. Jesus. And she's a different woman now. Amen. She still don't have a child. Jesus. Her uh -huh. womb is still empty. Yes. And she's different now. Yes. Uh -huh. Because she had a breakthrough. You have to have a breakthrough. And sometimes God uses our circumstances so that we can break through. Yes. The Bible says that when she and her husband came together, God remembered Hannah. Yes, he did. Uh huh. And God went in there and began to, the thing that he did to cause her to be barren, God turned it the other way. He yes. said, yes. do something. Yes. yes. Yes, yes. He allowed that child to form. He allowed Hannah to conceive a child. And Hannah yes. conceived a child in her womb. And the good thing about this situation, when Hannah conceived the child, her promise to God didn't change. No. So we can make a promise when we're in a tight situation. Oh, yes. We can make a promise when we're in <laughs> heaviness and heartache yes. and sadness. Oh, we can make all kinds of promises to God. But there is a time when God says it's time for you to pay up. Do you have the heart when it's time to pay up? Can you pay up when it's time to pay up? And Hannah had the, in her heart, she was ready to pay up. Yes. When she had that little child, it was time for them to go to the annual sacrifice. And she told her husband, Elkanah, I'm not going to go this year. Jesus. I'm not going to go right now because I want to wean the child. Amen. And when Samuel is weaned, then I'll go up to worship. And I want to I throw this in there. She named him Samuel. Samuel means heard of God. Yes. That's what his name means, heard mm -hmm. of God. So she told her husband, I wean little Samuel, then I'll come up mm -hmm. to worship. Amen. And the thing I like about this is she had the right husband. Because Elkanah honored Hannah's vow. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He didn't have to honor Hannah's vow. No. If uh -huh. you read in Numbers, when it talks, when it deals with the vow for the Nazarite, uh -huh. or any type of vow, not just a Nazarite vow, any type of vow, it says that if a woman makes a vow to God, mm -hmm. and if her father hears the vow, if she's not married, yes. her father can disavow. Yes. Mm. He can call it not and say no, and then she don't have to honor it. That's right. Mm. If, if she make a vow and her father hears and said, no, I don't want her to do it, mm -hmm. right. then God would have released her from the vow. That's right. And mm -hmm. if she's a married woman, her husband can do that. Mm -hmm. He can say no, 
and then God will release her from the vow. But mm -hmm. Elkanah did not do that. Elkanah honored the vow. Mm -hmm. Elkanah honored the vow. So when, when Samuel was weaned, he was about two or three years old. Mm. Hannah prepared the necessary sacrifice, and she went that year, and she took little Samuel. And remember now, this is during a time when Israel is in widespread apostasy. This mm. is during a time when Hophni and Phinehas are the priests <clears throat> under Eli, and mm -hmm. they're wicked and evil. This is during a time now when Israel is going through some situations where she vowed her child to God. There are some times that don't, might not look pleasant when we make a certain vow. We promise God some things, and God is waiting for us to honor it. The situation might not look good, mm -hmm. and we could say, God, I don't want to do it because of the way, what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. But she had to trust her child in that situation. Wow. She had to trust her child in a temple where all kinds of things were going on oh, yes. because of the oh, yes. wickedness of the priest. Jesus. She had to trust and honor her vow. I made a vow to God, mm -hmm. and I can't take it back, it back, and I know God is going to protect my child. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's going to protect my child in all of that wickedness that's going on in the temple. Mm. She left her child there. She took her <clears> child <throat> to Eli. Mm. And she said, this is the child. I'm the young lady that was praying that day. Uh -huh. And you prayed with me for a child. This is the child. And I promised God I would give him to you. Mm. And I'm turning him over to you right now. Mm. He was about two or three years old. Mm. Come on then. Two or three years old. Jesus. And the Bible said that in, in, in chapter 2, when she went to Eli and said this, the Bible said that Eli, and this, and this is a thing, when you have one breakthrough, see, breakthrough is very necessary. Mm -hmm. yes. Breakthrough, I said, is, is, is rising above a barrier or an obstacle, mm -hmm. but something very important that a breakthrough does. A breakthrough opens the door for further process mm -hmm. and further progress. Yes. When you get your breakthrough, you open the door for further progress progress into mm -hmm. what God is calling you to. Mm -hmm. Eli told Hannah when she brought little Samuel to him, he says, because you have lent him to the Lord, I pray that God give you a fruitful womb. Mm. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh -huh. I believe wow. Hannah, Hannah and Elkanah had three more sons, yes. and they had two daughters. Yes. God opened her womb. It wasn't that God wanted Hannah to remain barren. But God opened Han Hannah's womb, mm. and God blessed Hannah with more children. But what Hannah had to do, Hannah had to be willing to first go through her circumstance. Yes. And Hannah had to be willing to give her child over to God. Amen. Her womb yes. was blessed. Her womb was blessed, and she had more children. One breakthrough opened the door for further breakthrough. Yes. And yes. we know who Samuel was. For time's sake, just give you a few highlights. Samuel was working as a young child in the temple under Eli, mm -hmm. learning to serve God, yes. worshiping in the temple. Mm -hmm. And every year, the world says that Hannah would bring him a new coat. And she would probably check on how he's doing. Mm -hmm. As he would grow, she would bring him a new coat every year. She, she would check on how he was doing, but she never pulled him from the temple because she had dedicated him to yes, God. Yes. And that's what God wanted. And, and if you were to study Samuel's life, don't have time to go into it today. God used him miraculously. But as a young child, he was moving around the temple as a priest. Mm. But when it was time for Samuel to walk into the further calling of God, God began to call Samuel in chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. God called Samuel from not just being a priest, but he wanted Samuel to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, his heritage was priest. He operated in the priesthood for a long time as mm -hmm. a young child. Yes. But in chapter 3 is when God began to call on Samuel. Mm -hmm. At that time, he was still young. He didn't know the voice of God. He couldn't discern the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And as God began to call Samuel, he thought it was Eli calling him. Yes. So he ran to Eli and said, um, yes, you called me? Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. He heard the voice again, but God was calling Samuel. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Hannah's struggle. Yes. Why did Hannah mm -hmm. have to struggle? It was for Samuel. Yes. Samuel was in Hannah's mm. womb. God had God something did. for Samuel to do. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Hannah was special too. Mm -hmm. Hannah was blessed too, but God was working for Samuel. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I struggle sometimes with the generation coming up behind me. Yes. I have to stand sure. Yes. Yes. God began to call on Samuel to be the prophet. Jesus. He said, I know you're working as a priest. You're going to be a priest as well, but I'm calling you to a higher call. I want you to prophesy mm. my word. And God called him the second time. He ran to Eli. Yes, you called me. He said, no, I didn't call you. Go mm. back to bed. The third time, God called Samuel. Mm. He ran to Eli. He said, no, I didn't call you. But Eli discerned at that moment that it was God. Uh -huh. It was God. Eli said, go 
back to bed. And if he calls again, says, speak, Lord, thy servant Jesus. hear. Mm. And that's what God wants to hear. Yes. When he calls, mm. we have to be in a place that says, speak, Lord, oh, that's thy servant yes. hear. But sometimes God calls and somebody <clears throat> says, well, I'm not ready, God, to mm. give up Jesus. this. I'm not ready. But see, Samuel was ready. Why was he ready? Because his mother gave him to God. Yes. It's important to give your children to God. Yes. Why was he ready? Because his whole life was spent in the temple. Jesus. Serving God. Yes. He was too young to know who he was serving. Mm -hmm. He was too but God knew one day I'm going to call him as a prophet. Mm -hmm. And when I call Samuel, I need to hear speak, <coughs> Lord. Thy servant heareth. Yes, yes. And to get Samuel there, Hannah had to go through. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> to get Samuel to yes. the place that he can say, Speak, Lord. Even whether he knew what he was saying or not, Samuel, Samuel had to say, speak, Lord, yes. thy servant. Yes. He had to be standing there as a servant of God, waiting for God's instruction, waiting for God's impartation. Mm -hmm. To get Samuel in that place, Hannah had to go through some hurt. Yes. Hannah had to go through some heartache. Hannah had to go yes. through some heaviness. Hannah had to be mistreated. Hannah had to be talked about. But God says, I know you're going to go through, Hannah, but there's a breakthrough waiting on you. Yes. Because in your breakthrough, you're going to receive the promise. Yes. Samuel is in your womb. So when he went back to bed, the scripture says that that time God didn't just call, but God stood beside Samuel. Jesus. Mm. It says, and God stood yes, yes. and called. And he repeated what Eli told him. And that's what God and now. God began to prophesy to Samuel the destruction that was going to come upon the line of Eli. Uh -huh. Now, before this happened, this is very important. In the beginning of chapter 3, it says that the word of God was precious. There, were, there was no open vision. That means it was rare. God had stopped speaking. Because of Israel's sin, because of Israel's wickedness, God had stopped speaking to the priests, to the prophets. Nobody heard from God. God had shut down. And when he spoke to Samuel, it was uh -huh. the first time God spoke to his people in years. Mm -hmm. Samuel was the vessel. I'm talking about waiting on God. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about understanding what God is doing yes. in your life. Yes. She didn't understand what Thank God was going to do with that seed in her womb. She didn't understand mm -hmm. when she turned her son over to God what yes. she was doing. Mm -hmm. But God was going to use Samuel to be the first utterance after years oh of not speaking. That was the first utterance, Thank the first you. revelation from God was to Samuel. Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is why her way was so hard. Yes. This is why it was so tough. There was something in Hannah that God was going to use to do. And that was Samuel. God yes. was going to use. And if you read Samuel's life, he was used in a very miraculous way. Yes. Yes. And God began to speak to Samuel of the judgment that he was going to bring upon Eli and his two sons uh -huh. for their sins and transgression. And that little Samuel had to tell. He didn't want to say it. No, he didn't. didn't. He didn't want to say this to his master. Eli was his master. Mm -hmm. Eli was his teacher. He was holding it. Eli said, go ahead and say it, son. Mm -hmm. You got to speak. He was training. Even though <coughs> Eli was getting ready to be taken off the scene, he was still training Samuel. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's important that you speak God's word. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Satan wants to put envy and jealousy in us when mm -hmm. we see the next one coming up. Mm -hmm. But Eli dealt with Samuel. He didn't, he didn't get jealous. No. Even no, what Samuel had to say to him. He didn't get jealous. <coughs> His time was out because of what he had not done. Mm -hmm. yes. But he didn't get jealous. He still coerced Samuel to do what was right. right. He said, whatever God gives you to speak, son, you must speak it. Uh -huh. Even if it's to me. Because sometimes we don't want to hear negative things about ourselves. Mm -hmm. But he said, even if it's to me, son, you must speak yes. it. And Samuel began to prophesy. So the first prophecy mm. in many years came from the mouth of Samuel. Yes. And when Eli died, Sam, Samuel took his place as judge of Israel. Mm -hmm. yes. Samuel operated as a priest. He operated as a prophet. Look how God used this young man. Mm -hmm. This was what was in Hannah. Yes. She didn't know all the night she had to cry. Yes. Mm. She was used as a priest. He was used as a prophet. He was used as a judge. And he's likened to Moses. God really used Samuel. Yes. Yes. God used Samuel to anoint the first two kings yes. of Israel. Yes. Saul and David. Yes. And even from his death, God allowed Samuel to speak destruction yes. upon Saul. Yes. yes. Yes, he did. God mm -hmm. used Samuel. Thank but you. Samuel was in Hannah's womb. Hannah mm -hmm. didn't know that. Jesus. I'm praying that we understand God's will in our lives yes. as we go through certain situations and as we go through mm -hmm. certain circumstances. Yes. And that we thank God mm -hmm. as we look back 
and we think about people in our lives, Jesus. like mm -hmm. Hannah, mm -hmm. that stood and persevered mm -hmm. and fought with Satan Jesus. Mm -hmm. and dealt with certain situations, mm -hmm. didn't give up, and because of that, Jesus. we stand today. Amen. Amen. Because of that, Amen. God is using each of us today as Jesus. he desires, because somebody ahead of us mm. decided to do like Hannah and turn it over to God. Yes. And say, yes, yes Lord, from the heart. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. Praise God.